Hi, my name is Matthew, and you might know me as Be Like Boy on TikTok. It's Be Like Boy on Twitter. Be Like underscore Matt underscore on Instagram, or you might not know me at all. And for those of you who don't, I am a content creator that talks all things World of Wonder and Drag Race, especially that of Drag Race outside of the US. And today, for my 12th video ever, we are doing a little celebratory project. A couple weeks ago, I finally hit the milestone of 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. And as a celebration, I promised you all we would do a little Q&A video. Because all you lovely people took the time out of your day to subscribe to me, which means the world to me. So the least I can do is let you all know a little bit more about myself. Now, since working on this video, I did hit 6,000 subscribers and currently at the time of filming, am almost at 7,000 subscribers. So although the original intention of this video was to be a 5,000 subscriber special, it's technically going to be an almost 7,000 subscriber special. Yeah, that will have a really good ring to it in the title, I'm sure. So I took to my YouTube community tab and I took to Twitter to ask all of you some questions about me that you were just curious about. Well, actually, JK, there were some limits, especially to those of you on Twitter. You know who you are. But nonetheless, I got a plethora of messages, so thank you guys for reaching out and participating. I've narrowed down 16 questions that I thought would be fun to answer and fun for you all to listen to. Let's get started, shall we? Tell us a bit more about you. How did you come across Drag Race? What do you love most about the art form? There are some more questions in that message, but I decided to narrow it down to two. I would honestly say the thing that I love most about drag as an art form is the capture of queer creativity in a single body and single soul. You look at a drag artist and you see a person's willingness to experiment, especially with their identity. And there's something about that that I've always found so powerful. And it really drew me to drag as an art form. I love consuming drag content. Content. I love supporting drag artists. It really is one of my favorite things in the entire world. And with that, how did I come across Drag Race? I remember it so vividly. So I came out as gay in 2016 and I had never seen Drag Race at that point. And at the time, I didn't really have an interest to. But then one day in late 2017, oh my god, I was in the bathtub, right? Just scrolling on the Instagram Explore page. And that is exactly the moment a video popped up of Charlie Hyde's lip syncing to Trinity the Tuck on season nine. And I just remember being enamored by the explosiveness of Trinity's performance and the chaos of Charlie's Lack of performance. Charlie, let's go! Charlie, come on! Do something, Charlie. And the rest was her story. So yes, my first exposure to Drag Race was season nine, but that leads me into what was your first season of Drag Race? So many of you might not know this about me, but my very first season of Drag Race that I watched live was, drum roll please, all Stars 3. I know, I know, but yes, my very first season of Drag Race that I watched live was an All Stars season. Right around the time when I first watched that lip sync between Trinity and Charlie is right around when the promos for All Stars 3 dropped. And at the time, I didn't know anybody. Like, I don't know why, but I have a very clear memory of looking at Thorgy Thor's promo from All Stars 3 and thinking, who the heck is this? But I just knew I had to watch. So if you really think about it, without All Stars 3 and Season 9, I wouldn't be here talking to all of you. So All Stars 3 might not have been that good, but at least it produced the Be Like Boy channel. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. What are your thoughts on garlic bread? I think garlic bread is God's gift to humanity, uh, other than Marina Summers, of course. Have you met any international queens, either on stage, at a show, or in a meet and greet. Okay, so the very first international queen that I ever saw perform live was Ella Vade from UK season three. In 2022, I lived in London for a while, and at the time I went to this like, it was more of like a comedy show, and Ella Vade was one of the special guests there. So that was kind of like the very first time I saw one of the international girls perform slash host a show. However, the very first international girl that I met in a meet and greet was Pangina Heels when she was doing a tour in the States 
in late 2022. And that was about a few months later after Elevade. However, the complete exhaustive list of all the international girls I've met are Valenciaga, Je t'aime Mami Mamiwata, Kitty Space, Moon, Ginger Bitch, Cam Hugh, Paloma, and Rita Baga. Yeah, could you tell I took a trip to Paris last year? But yeah, that is just who I've met in person. What would your drag name be if you were a drag queen. Oh, I've been waiting for this one. Okay, so this name is trademarked by me, for me, so nobody steal it. My drag name would unequivocally be, you ready? Ellie Vader. I know, I know, it's stupid. I love it. It's stupid and I love it. Escalera! Oh! And yes, that is from the legendary House of Vader. As in Darth. Just kidding, I don't watch Star Wars. Give us your astrological big three, age, and if you have studied something, what is it? So, I am a Pisces sun, a Cancer moon, and a Sagittarius rising. I just turned 23 about two weeks ago, and I went to school for English, silly old me. You wouldn't know it by my inability to speak properly when you meet me in person, but yes, I studied words. I also had minors in linguistics and professional writing. Can you take over hosting Italia? Please, I'm begging. Siete in crisi. Io sto arrivando. Why did you decide to start learning Italian? So my relationship with learning a second language has been long and arduous. When I was in high school, I took three years of French with quite literally nothing to show for it. Bonjour, je m'appelle Matthew, je suis américain. Um, je ne parle pas français, parle tu anglais? Oui, d'accord. And that's it. <laughs> And then when I was at uni, I needed to take a second language to graduate. At first, I took Russian because I had taken a lot of Russian literature classes up until that point. English major. And I found out that I had enough credits to qualify for a Russian minor. I just needed to take the language. And I was like, sure, you know what? Let's pick up a random minor and cover my second language credit while in school. <laughs> Yeah, that lasted about a week. I dropped that class after the first quiz. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. It was too hard for me. The following semester though, still desperate for a second language, I took Italian for the heck of it and instantly fell in love with the language. I knew right then and there I wanted to pursue it. Once I graduated college, I decided to self-study. And so here we are, ciao ragazzi. Who is the Rue girl that you think could replace <gasps> RuPaul. So I always see people tossing out names like Sasha Colby and Bob the Drag Queen whenever the conversation surrounds who's going to replace Mama Ru, which are all very great options, don't get me wrong. But I have a firm belief that the perfect Ru girl to replace RuPaul herself is Simone. In my opinion, Simone, actually no, not even my opinion. I feel like this is fact. Simone has the charisma, the fashion, and the love to carry RuPaul's legacy. She would be the perfect replacement to me. And I just think she has what it takes. We know your channel is all about international drag race. What US season would you reminisce about in a future video? Oh, okay, there are a few I could talk about. Obviously, as my first season, I can talk about All-Stars 3 to death, more than it already has. I could also talk about Season 12, All-Stars 4, Season 3, like nobody's business. So who knows, maybe for a 10k or a 50k subscriber special, I'll make a video about a US season of Drag Race. Who knows? Can you name some of your favorite international queens that haven't been on Drag Race? Okay, let me think here. We have... Um, Chardonnay, Jamila Solis, La Senora Chen, all from Italy, Natasha Princess from Brazil, uh, Babula from Sweden, Paprika from Switzerland, Cosmic Sans from Japan, the list is endless. Which twist? <gasps> a twist! What's that video of Melinda Virgo where she's like, <gasps> a twist! Which twist is objectively the best? Okay, so I'm looking at this one of two ways. The greatest format change, in my opinion, 
is very clearly the golden beaver twist from Canada 4. I think the idea of a queen saving another queen from lip syncing is great TV and creates more dynamic and interesting storylines than other format changes we've gotten in the past, such as the lip sync assassin format or the top two format. But I would also love to give a shout out to the comeback twist from Drag Race France season two. The idea of having the returning contestants and the remaining contestants face off in a challenge and having the best of the returning and the worst of the remaining lip sync, the returning fighting for a spot back in the competition and the remaining fighting to keep her spot. It's just like genius. And I just can't believe it took us so long to think of that sort of ordering of things. And I think we should do it more often if we're going to have comeback challenges. What are some of your favorite looks from international seasons? Okay, so I have a few. I think to me, La Diamond's What's Your Sign look from Drag Race Italia 2 might actually be my favorite runway look of all time. I don't know, that title changes for me often, but I think right now it is La Diamond's What's Your Sign look from Italia 2. But I also have to give shout outs to Anime Wong's Curtain to Couture look from Thailand 1. Um, let's see here, Lena Galore's cinema look from Italia 3. And Melissa Bianchini's Death Becomes Her look from Italia 3. Um, Venus Deluxe design look from episode 2 on Philippines 1. Oh, Kata Minaj's Queen of the Night look from Holland 2. That look was so charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent coded. Okay, I kind of did this one on the spot. I'm sure there are some that I'm not thinking of at the moment, but I'm just kind of blanking right now. What other franchises do you want to see happen in the future? I would really love Drag Race to finally break into the continent of Africa, maybe Drag Race South Africa, because I know South Africa has a lot of really talented drag artists that could benefit from a show like Drag Race. I would also love to see Drag Race Japan and Drag Race South Korea and Drag Race India thrown into the mix. And yes, I have not forgotten about that random announcement World of Wonder made like two or three years ago about Drag Race finally coming to Japan and India, only for us still not to have them out yet. I have not forgotten. Hopefully, those will start coming into fruition sometime. Any favorite local queens? I can give a shout out to many drag artists from the cities that I've lived in, uh, which I will include their socials on the screen and probably down below in the description. There is Omega, Pineapple Honeydew Delight, Anadonia Delight, um, Marquise Gaylord, Edna Moi, um, Empress Tupri, Dakota Cox, Jay the Doll, um, Zane Dollings, just to name a few. So if you want to go support them, I will link their socials below. Actually, no, you should go and support them. Go give them a follow on socials, but you will find all their links below. Uh, finally, who is Matthew? Matthew is a vision, darling. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And I think that's a good place to stop. <laughs> I apologize for this video being more sporadic than normal, but I guess that's the point. For all of you to get to know me better, and I suppose that includes not sticking to my normal formula of YouTube videos. Once again, I want to reiterate, thank you all for joining me here in this YouTube community. The fact that I haven't even been on YouTube for a year and I already hit almost 7,000 subscribers is so special to me and I'm so grateful. You all contribute to the success of this channel and my favorite part about making videos is being able to discuss this brand, this franchise that we've all grown to love with all of you. So I can't wait to make more videos for you in the future because we have a lot to discuss. But even though I didn't say anything controversial this video, at least I hope I didn't. Please remember that I am just a gay person talking on the internet.